He doesn't switch out of the backpedal until I'm throwing the ball. Then he goes into full sprint. So I really have control over what the cornerback's doing at this point. Right anytime time the cornerback drops back, you're going to have success underneath with his route. The champ is here! For the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Snub of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got another explosive pass play for you guys out of my pistol offense. If you guys have been following this series, uh, this is probably my favorite playbook. I just don't use it very often because I don't think a lot of these plays are available in regular playbooks. So the people that play with custom playbooks and stuff like that probably are left out. But the play I'm going to show you guys today is available. It's actually in a couple of different playbooks. I'll probably have it popping up on the screen right now as I'm talking about it. Uh, but ultimately, this is one of the easiest one-play touchdowns against every single defense you will find in the game. I've already put out a couple of videos from the pistol as well. I'll have links in the description if you guys didn't catch that because every single one of them that i put out so far is one of the glitchiest Woo! setups or one of the glitchiest plays in the game. So hit the like button, let me know in the comment section if you guys want to see more videos from this playbook. Other than that, the formation is the trips left open. This is one of the reasons I stopped writing this playbook last year is because I really didn't have a lot of one-play touchdowns for defenses, but this particular play I'm going to show you guys today is a one-play touchdown against every single defense in the game, and it's super easy to set up. The play is the PA verticals. On the defensive side, we're going to start off with cover two like we always do. So let's go ahead and start off with Tampa two. Now, as always, this video is brought to you by my coin sponsors at AOEH.com. If you guys want to get your mud team up and help support this channel at the same time, all you have to do is check them out. Link in the description below. Use discount code MONEY to get 3% off what's always guaranteed to be the cheapest coins on the market. Now, this is a very glitchy setup when it comes to the two routes that the Y route and the A route are running are probably two of the best routes when it comes to hitting one play touchdowns in the game. Uh, the A route's a deep crosser. It's very hard to stop route. I'll show you guys how to run this against multiple defenses in a moment. And then the Y route there, the post route, is going to be the one play touchdown for the most part. Now, as far as a setup for this play against cover two, cover three, most defenses, all I'm going to do is put the B route here on a 10-yard out route. That's all I have to do. And you're going to see how, especially against cover two, uh, number one, the cover two safety on the right side of the field is typically going to react to the deep crosser. Uh, it'll also react the slants and stuff like that which really isn't helpful and you can see right here i mean he's way out of position and we get a very easy one play touchdown now if you watch that safety he looked like he didn't know what he was doing that safety had a very glitchy reaction here as he basically just gets caught in between three receivers I mean, look at it like he doesn't know where he's supposed to be in coverage like he thinks he's supposed to cover like three different guys and he basically just gets frozen in uh, his indecision i think another thing that makes this play glitchy is what the running back's doing a lot of times check and releases have really weird reactions when it comes to safeties and cornerbacks um, so that's something that i think is actually benefit to leave in the play which you can see right here i mean this is a very easy one play touchdown i am bullet and pass leading up by the way to split those safeties there is a little bit of a timing thing here when it comes to that because if i if i wait a little too long and i'll show you guys what that looks like here if i wait too long the safety can get back into the play although you know you can see here i mean that's also based off of the type of throw that i threw i basically floated it up there so it really is a bit of a timing thing but it's not very difficult to do by any means. Like I said, I always recommend practicing these things. And you can see right here, bullet, pass, lead up. There's just nothing out here. And we're cooking, you know, the entire defense and scoring from anywhere on the field. Cover two man will have the exact same effect. So let's go and let's pick that. The setup's going to be the exact same. It's going to put the B route here on a 10-yard out route once again. Uh, that's what splits the safeties. So you really can't go away from that. You kind of need that to be there. Uh, you can, you know, instead of going for like a drag or something like that. But ultimately, you can see the Y route gets right up the middle one more time. The safeties are split because of that 10 yard out round. We have a very easy one play touchdown against cover two man as well. Both of those cover twos react the exact same way. We're going to go, we're going to switch it up and go with cover three. So let's go and let's pick cover three sky. So, as far as cover three goes, all I have to do is put that B round a 10 yard out route once again. Isn't it great? I don't have to do much, you know, reading the defense or anything. Not a lot of adjustments. I uh, just basically pick this play and go. And you're going to see how this Y right here once again gets past that cornerback. Now, that was a horrible throw, but you can see he was wide open. We'll go and do that one more time. Hopefully I can set my feet a little bit better or something. 
because ultimately all you have to do is wait for this wide route to cross and it's a very easy one play touchdown against cover three with the exact same setup. And this deep crosser here is really what helps pull down the coverage. You can see the cornerback is waiting for this deep crosser to come into the area uh, basically the same way he was in the cover two zone. That's really what makes this play so glitchy. In the meantime, he's getting sucked down to the point where he really can't get back in time to help with the actual play, which is going to be this deep crossing route for the one play touchdown. You don't really need that deep crosser though. You can put that deep crosser on a fade or a streak and you'll see how, you know, with the same setup, obviously, with that out route, you'll see how you'll have uh, the same success. You'll just have a little bit more separation from the safety now, although realistically, he got back into the area anyway. So there's really two ways to do that. Now, since we did cover three, we'll go and we'll match it with cover one. Go get with cover one hole, which is going to look very similar. Against cover one, the reason I showed you that alternate setup is because this is going to be the best setup when it comes to cover one. As far as the B route, I, don't, I can put him on a slant. I can make him a check down if I want to. It really doesn't matter. But the A route here is really what's going to be different. Putting him on a fade is going to be important. And the reason for that is simple because a lot of times this Y route here, because of the coverage uh, of the streak coming through, it will kind of get in the way of the cornerback and basically uh, keep him clean so that the receiver can get an easy one play touchdown there. If you don't do that streak or that fade, a lot of times uh, the cornerback will be in front of the receiver, although here you can see we're having success. So realistically, this is another play where you can run in a multitude of ways and still have success. But I would say the full setup would be putting the A route on a fade, putting the B route on an out route. This would be the easiest way to, uh, to have success. You can see right there, the cornerbacks run into one another. So if the cornerback is getting out in front of your receiver, that will change that. And the reason that works is because uh, Madden's AI, I think, kind of glitches out once these guys get so close to one another where he doesn't really know who his responsibility is for a few seconds. Because you can see he covers 84. He follows 84 for a second and kind of treats, you know, 84 essentially sets a pick for this receiver to get open. So it can work if you have a good enough receiver. You don't have to do this setup. But you can see how if you don't have a good enough receiver, like, you know, Watkins is fast, but he's not really good at running routes or anything like that or creating separation on his own, you can see how this setup can do that. Next up, cover four. We did pretty much every single defense, and the, pretty much the same setup worked every single time. We're going to start off with cover four drop, and then we'll work our way back to match. Now, this particular play is very specific when it comes to home running uh, cover four. You have to run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field. You have to put the A route on a fade, B route on a drag, and last but not least, I mean, this looks like the, a very similar set to what we've been doing, but last but not least, we have to motion this Y route in. To do that, you have to put them, you have to motion them to the left. You can see here, he only moves in about a foot, but that foot is important. So, motioning him to the left. Now we have a one play touchdown against cover four. You'll see how he'll get past the safety and cornerback, and then you can bullet and pass lead away and he basically splits the cornerback and safety. This is a very unique setup when it comes to cover four. This play is very timing based too because if this receiver feels like he ran his route, he'll stop and come back to the ball right around here. Uh, so you really have to basically throw it bullet pass lead once he gets parallel with the safety, bullet and pass lead to the right away from that safety. So I'll do that setup one more time. Like I said, this is very... Um, you know, it's a very uh, timing heavy play. So like I said, I'm going to wait till he's parallel with that safety one more time. And that's when I'll make my throw right about here. Because if I don't throw it on time, like I said, he'll stop. If you do throw it on time, though, it's an easy one play touchdown. And then last but not least, we have regular cover four. We'll go ahead and we'll go back to the regular nickel for that. Regular cover four by that, I mean, is cover four quarters, cover four match. Same setup applies. Just put your guy on a 10-yard out route one more time. And then we're right back to where we were, where this Y route is just going to cook uh, just about every single defense fence deep as you can see right there it's a very easy one play touchdown against cover for quarters so i showed you guys how to hit a home run against every single defense but before i end this video i'm going to show you guys how to run this play in a way that'll basically you know you can dink and dunk your opponent to death all game and have a lot of success as well so we're going to go we're going to pick the pa verticals one more time now we're going to go with random uh two four five against random it's best to motion this receiver across and put him on a streak put the b route on a slant and then put the Y route on a drag. Now this here, I'm really just looking at the Y route and the A route. The, the streak isn't really the read at all. He's just meant to pull back safety coverage. But ultimately, the Y route and the A route will get open against just about every single defense in the game. If your opponent is saying the zone drops to about 25 and stuff like that, that's where the B route is going to come in handy. If, they're, if your opponent's saying the zone drops to 25, 30, the B route is going to get open at about 20 yards right in front of those guys. So that's really the only real reason for that. But ultimately, you also have a really good check down when it comes 
to the running back. The A route's going to be the big play. I'm going to be throwing to him nine times out of ten, even though he is my worst receiver right now with Greg Ward. This particular play, you have a high-low route concept on both sides of the field. You have it on uh, the side with the A route and the Y route, where you have a high-low, and then the other side, you have it with the B route and the running back, which is also a high-low. Um, which is going to make it very difficult to cover this play on both sides. You can see here, once again, the A route is pretty much the first read every single time. That'll be the most consistent route, whether it's man or zone. So it's really going to be hard to, to diagnose for your opponent, uh, no matter what side of the play you're going on. Um, and then, like I said, you have a really good number of checkdowns. The A route is pretty much always going to be there. That was a cover three. Like I said, you're going to have a really good series of checkdowns with your running back and your drag, with, no matter which way you go. I don't want to just keep running to the same guy over and over, though. You guys can pretty much figure that out. Now, there's a couple of really good plays that work with that same deep route crossing concept. Plays like the uh, the PA counter waggle, uh, the PA boot. They're going to work pretty much the exact same way. Let's go and let's pick this one, though. I like this one a little bit better. This play here, just want to motion this guy in. Just bring him in a little bit. That's all you really got to do. We're going to have a lot of success uh, with those crossers again. Basically, the A route and the Y route, really good man beaters. This particular route, though, it gets open a little bit deeper uh, than some of the previous stuff that I showed. Uh, as you can see, we have a very easy play there. And like I said, motion this guy in. It's really just meant to pull back, uh, pull back coverage one more time. Bring him in a little bit tighter. Uh, although against like a cover too like we have here you might actually be able to do even more you can see this guy's getting open at about 35 yards so it's a good chance that even if your zone drops your opponent are set that he can get behind it there's also a really glitchy play the mesh dig which is something that um, has a lot of uh, good plays when it comes, especially when it comes to cover two so let's go let's pick the mesh dig let's start off with tampa two let's play here just gotta put the a route on a streak uh, and I think it's best to probably put the X route either on a slant or a drag, but it really doesn't matter because the Y route here, as long as he doesn't get bumped off too much, is going to get outside of that safety cornerback combo. The A route on the streak, though, really is the only important part because ultimately uh, the Y route here is just going to, um, you know, the, the cornerback reacts to whatever route's in front of him instead of the Y route, which is basically why it works. You just need a route crossing that cornerback, and I'd say a drag is probably the most effective. As you can see, it really just gets the Y route off the line for a catch and run uh, probably the quickest so that would be the route that i'd say be most effective the streak is just to pull back the uh the safety but you can see he just slips right past the cornerback and the cornerback can't react quickly enough i mean he doesn't he doesn't want to turn from his back pedal and that's why the play works because ultimately the back pedal he doesn't switch out of the back pedal until i'm throwing the ball then he goes in the full sprint so i really have control over what the cornerback's doing at this point can also have a lot of success against cover three, so we're going to pick that. Against cover three, you're going to want to do the exact same setup, but only this time I want to put the X route on a streak, because that's going to be what basically pulls that guy back, and then you can see how there's a window right between the cornerback and the, uh, the curl flat. You can put the A route on like an out route or something like that to basically pull that, uh, that curl flat down a little bit, give yourself a bit of a throwing window. You're not going to get going, but you'll have a very easy uh, catch and run. And that'll work against cover four the same way because it's essentially the same coverage. So let's go ahead and let's pick our cover four drop once again. Exact same setup. We want to give ourselves our out route, but it's going to have the exact same effect because that guy's still pulling back that cornerback and you're still going to have that window. So anything, cover three, cover four, anytime the cornerback drops back, you're going to have success underneath with his route. Same thing goes with cover two. Man, it's going to be the exact same thing. And it's going to be the exact same setup. You'll see how this Y route here will slip out because of all the, the jostling uh, for position and have a very easy throw to the boundary. So I'll do that one more time. Like I said, you can put the A, the A route on a fade, but basically, you know, his job is just to pull the coverage back. And then, like I said, you can get an easy catch and run one play touchdown for, with this as well. I'll go ahead and I'll try one more time to get that. As you can see, basically beats that jam outside. And then, like I said, at this point, it's really the boundary becomes the biggest issue. As you can see, I, I really had to fit into a tight window. So I'm going to end the video there. If you guys want to see a full breakdown of this offense, I'll have it on my Join Now community tab on my Patreon at the moment. But if you want to see it on YouTube, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.